what does your portfolio look like right now? What moves are you making? And what advice for this year ahead for the markets? So my advice is, I spend a lot of time, I haven't talked a lot about it, but I spend a lot of time looking at the macro economy and what is going and where it's going to drive assets. And my view is that the issues we've been talking about, printing of money, excess debt, are going to be the feature of the next two years. How do you pay for that? And so therefore, I am very aggressively positioned in crypto because the only other secular trend there is, I can divide any asset like the S&P 500 or real estate or gold by the central bank balance sheet, the Fed balance sheet. Hi there, once again, crypto lovers. Raul Pal, the inspirational founder and CEO of Real Vision, has lately offered some thought-provoking views that have the potential to completely change the direction of cryptocurrencies in the always changing world of digital assets. Following the sell-off of ETFs, there was some anxiety, but Bitcoin made a stunning recovery, rising $11,000 in a single day. The top cryptocurrency asset is now trading at about $48,000. Pal, a former executive at Goldman Sachs, has revealed his audacious forecast for the next crypto surge. In this video, we explore carefully Raul Pal's predictions for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana. According to Pal, before the current cycle ends, the price of Bitcoin will rise by an astounding 431%. Pal's confidence goes beyond the near term, as seen by even more positive estimates for Solana and Ethereum, which indicate increases of 8.52% and about 700% respectively, by the cycle's end in 2025. Come along as we peel back the layers of Pal's in-depth analysis from his most recent interview with experienced macro analyst Wethan. Find out the strong arguments supporting his positive position on cryptocurrency assets, both for the current cycle and the long run. Pal explores the specifics of why he thinks the cryptocurrency business is ready for significant expansion in 2024 and clarifies how central banks may be crucial in encouraging more people to adopt cryptocurrencies before the year is up. Keep watching as Raul Pal explains the factors influencing the cryptocurrency scene and reveals the possible catalysts for a big market upswing. In the upcoming months, don't miss out on the insightful information that might completely change your perspective of the cryptocurrency industry. Let's hear his thoughts. So I'm going to give two levels. The first, the very, very big picture level is the world is awash with debt. Global debt is 400% of global GDP. It, these are bananas numbers. So what does that mean? We talk about debt a lot. What it means really is the collateral, the assets that back the system have lots and lots of people claiming on them. So if anything goes wrong, you get a fraction of your money back. Also, we're learning that banks are now bailing in creditors. So you find that the issue in a leverage world is you actually don't think, whatever you think you own, you don't actually own. It can be taken away from you. That's the real issue we're trying to solve here at a very top level, is how do I keep that recorded ownership of what is mine and what is yours, and don't pollute them because some third party uses them for their own means. And then before you know it, nobody knows anything. But the other big change was obviously the internet. So if, when I got into this journey, the internet was around, but it wasn't the scale of what it is now. We're now creating these global nation states that are digital, that operate outside of the US or the UK or Europe. And they need a system of, as we get more digital, each day our lives get more digital. Digital assets now have value. This digital infrastructure is much more efficient at moving stuff around and recording the ownership. So if we now go to this system where in the United States you buy a house and it gets stamped and go to a notary and then it get recorded in a registrar, this can be instantaneous everywhere and nowhere and always verifiable. So it, it's really the operating system for the digital age. And without it, it kind of doesn't function. It's all a bit clunky. But with this instantaneous settlement, recorded ownership and transfer of everything. So it's kind of at three levels. Firstly, people understand that the system is broken and they're looking for answers. Some people choose gold, some people look, choose Bitcoin. People use different ways of, of getting around this. They can feel it, it's all around you. You can see it with populism, you can see it with just how markets react. So there's this feeling that I need to find an answer here. A lot of that is being driven by we know there's all this debt and I'm scared of it. Okay, that's good. The other thing is, what is the answer that the central banks chose or the governments? It was create more money. So you've got this macro backdrop of debt and this fear. So that's driving adoption. And then people are finding new use cases like NFTs for smart contract stuff. That's creating a technology adoption like anything, like the internet was. And it happens to be the fastest adoption 
of any technology the world has ever seen except AI, which has been faster. So those two things are driving the movement of crypto. So the crypto price is based off those two issues. The adoption of the technology, as everybody's starting to build on this new tech stack, and because it solves a lot of problems, and then it's the thing that the central banks are doing are devaluing your currency all the time. That creates a super mega trend within this. Now, it as a space is growing on average, including the bear markets, which are brutal as we all know, it's growing at 100% a year as a space. So there were 516 million wallets as of end of last year, active wallets. If it's growing at 100%, by the end of this year, it's a billion. Then the end of the year after, it's two billion. Because So the numbers are vast as people are adopting it. Now, the difference here between this and the internet or the mobile phone is we were users of the internet and mobile phone, but we didn't make money out of it unless you happen to own the right shares. But nobody can own the infrastructure of the internet. Different parts were. Here, you can actually own the thing by owning a token. It's clear that the rise in cryptocurrency ownership is a worldwide phenomena as we come to the end of our fascinating journey through the world of cryptocurrencies, with notable platforms like Crypto.com witnessing a remarkable 21% increase in owners reaching 516 million by June 2023, the momentum is undeniable. By the end of 2024, Bitfinex researchers predict an even greater jump, putting the potential number of cryptocurrency owners worldwide between 850 and 950 million. This ownership increase is in line with Raul Pal's optimistic forecasts for the cryptocurrency sector. Raul Pal expands on the macro reasons affecting the market and restates his incredibly positive view for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana in the following segment of the video. As the crypto community continues to expand, the stage is set for an unprecedented period of growth. Raul's thoughts offer a compelling narrative for the future in a world where cryptocurrencies are becoming more and more accepted. Regardless of your level of experience as an investor or where you are in your journey, his viewpoints on the macro environment and market dynamics provide insightful information that may help you better comprehend the cryptocurrency field. So, let's return to Raul Pal's interview as he delves deeper into the macroeconomic factors influencing crypto and unveils his extremely bullish predictions for the key players in the market, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana. This is the first global homogenous investment product the world has ever seen that can operate like this. So it's the same product. Bitcoin is Bitcoin in India as it is in Nigeria, as it is in London, as it is in Hawaii. It's the same thing. Indian investors can't take, trade Tesla shares. Yes, they can trade gold, but they don't have access to it because you have to go to the to the to the store and buy gold jewelry, and you've lost a lot of the the markup within that. But here, anybody can get a wallet because it's on the internet, and you can send money home to your mother in the Philippines from the United States instantaneously. And by just owning one of the tokens in Ethereum token or whatever it is, you've got a share of it. So if more people adopt it, you get richer. This is like one of the greatest schemes the world has ever seen in creating mass wealth, not for Wall Street, but for retail who got to front run all of this and create a new system that solves the problem of what's the investment, uh, what the central banks and governments are doing and solves the problem of an over indebted society. I mean, that's how big it is. What does your portfolio look like right now? What moves are you making? And what advice for this year ahead for the markets? So my advice is I spend a lot of time, I haven't talked a lot about it, but I spend a lot of time looking at the macro economy and what is going and where it's going to drive assets. And my view is that the issues we've been talking about, printing of money, excess debt, are going to be the feature of the next two years. How do you pay for that? And so therefore, I am very aggressively positioned in crypto because the only other secular trend there is, I can divide any assets like the S&P 500 or real estate or gold by the central bank balance sheet, the Fed balance sheet, i.e. how much money are the Fed printing or putting on their books. And most of them are pretty flat line. Then you look at the NASDAQ and it's going up because there's, we're getting more digital every day, so there's endless demand. And then crypto goes up exponentially, as we know. So the fastest race, a horse in the race is crypto. So I'm actually 100% of my liquid net worth in this. And I have been actually for since 2020. And I use the bear markets to add into, because I think we are in a once in a lifetime wealth accumulation opportunity for everybody. Be you rich or poor, you can still put 10% of your savings in as you go. And so that's how strongly I feel about it. It's not just a passing interest. It's not something I say on TV. It's something I actually truly believe in.
Raoul Paul believes that cryptocurrencies can help address issues with government regulations, central banks, and a debt-ridden society. He believes that this change is a once-in-a-lifetime chance for regular investors to take advantage of the changing financial environment. This belief is reflected in his investing approach, which allocates a sizable amount of his portfolio to cryptocurrencies, like as Solana, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. Since 2020, Pal has allocated all of his liquid net worth to these investments, seeing weak markets as tactical windows of opportunity for growth. Raul views Bitcoin acceptance as a step toward democratizing finance, enabling anybody, regardless of wealth, to engage in the global financial system. His perspective goes beyond simple financial gain. Raul talks about possible price swings and makes cautious forecasts. He projects that the values of Ethereum, Solana, and Bitcoin might range from $15,000 to $20,000, $250,000, and $1,000, respectively. He clarifies that these forecasts are impacted by changes in the market, the evolution of exchange-traded funds, and the relative outperformance of various cryptocurrencies at various points in the market cycle. Raul Pal's viewpoint essentially captures a conviction about the long-term worth and expansion possibilities of cryptocurrencies in the face of a changing financial environment. His excitement goes beyond monetary rewards, highlighting how democratizing cryptocurrency is in terms of changing the way the world economy operates. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. Until next time, happy investing.